Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, feel welcome to bring any. Are there, yeah, good. Um, I first started working with white shell woman and white buffalo woman when I was a child. Um, I am not a shaman and I am not shamanic. But my entire life, shamans have found me and worked with me. They invite me to work with them. But um, I just want to be very clear that um, I'm not like a white girl pretending to be a shaman. Oh, it's one of my cats. No, That's cool. Woodpecker. Woodpecker. Oh, yeah. Blue yes. Day. Nature comes and joins us. Yes. Um, and, uh, however... Because I was born in this life with full memory of all of my lives and my time between lives and my time before incarnating as a human, of course, I have had lives in the past. We, we all have, or I've been an earth healer, you know, and Native American, different cultures around the world. Uh, and people who are uh, powerful practitioners of any study, be it Hindu, shamanic, what have you, they see that and they know that if I am there when they do ceremony, I can set space and provide an anchor for them that will be useful, that I can help them. So I've been lucky enough that through my entire life, shamans have found me to be someone they wish to have in their company. And they, they've taught me a lot. I thought this was normal. I thought, in fact, Debbie was there the first time she and I were driving with our friend, um, and they asked me, am I a shaman? I'm like, no. And they said, well, how do you know all this stuff? And I said, because every time shamans come and help me out, I'm smart enough to ask them a lot of questions. And they said, what do you mean? I said, you know, whenever you get lost and a shaman comes and shows you the way. And yeah, I got that, this expression from them of what? And I say, you know, when, like, when you are walking through a city and you get lost or you're backpacking and you get lost and a shaman shows up to show you, direct you on your way, I'm smart enough to ask them to teach me while we're together. And again, I got that dumbfounded look and that's when I'm like, oh, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> so age, what, 53, 54, I learned that lesson. <laughs> um, so white shell woman has been with me since I was a child. White buffalo woman came to me after white shell woman forced me, totally strong-armed me into teaching, med leading meditations. Um, I never thought of this as something I could or should do and she was like no you're gonna do this um and then um I said well only if you help me so I always thought of her as my friend who helps me do something that she wants me to do that I don't have self-confidence in doing um and then white buffalo woman started coming in and the two of them would come and I always thought of it as helping me. So we did that for a few years before I learned, oh, that's channeling. Um, I was like, man, other people channel. I want to channel. And words came out of my mouth. What do you think you're doing all this time? And I was like, oh, white buffalo woman. Okay. Um, so I mentioned this not to be uh, self-defacing, but, um, or to prove I'm a humble person, but because we, each of us have within us skills, abilities, and experiences that we don't think twice of because they're natural for us. Every single time I teach the how to receive and channel messages, there are people who say, but I've always done this. I'm like, yes, and now you're learning that what you've always done is receiving and channeling messages. Um, so, um, I mentioned before, the last time I, uh, they spoke f through me, I still don't think of it as channeling when it's white shell woman and white buffalo woman because they're such dear friends and mentors of mine that um, I'm so used to sharing my space with them. Uh, we have a very comfortable relationship. I still think of them as helping me to do what they want me to do. Um, 
The last time they spoke through me was the last meditation before we closed my wellness center. And that was pretty wild. Since then, they've been with me, but they kind of took a step back for the most part. Um, and they've had other people and beings who have been working with me. So I'm so <clears throat> happy when they said they were. I, I thought that they were like done with ever speaking through me. I'm so excited that they're going to do this tonight. Um, again, I have no idea what they want to say. So I'm a little nervous. I'm going to have to really check out to let them come in. Otherwise, my um, excitement and nervousness will interfere. Um, I also say that so that if any of you ever find yourself being told to speak, let someone speak through you, it's normal to feel nervous. And to feel like, what if, what if? That's normal. Um, when they first start speaking, I'm gonna be interfering a little bit, so it'll be my frequency and their frequency, but you'll see as they take over and I kind of step back, you, you'll feel the shift. Um, I was told to invite each of you to, um, and white buffalo woman is telling me, we'll take care of that. But uh, just a heads up, white buffalo woman is going to invite each of you to connect with your guides to open up so that um, you may hear directly from them in your head. Or, and that's okay, you're not stealing them from me. I, you know, they're here for all of us. Um, or you may hear some voices in your head from your guides, and they might say things to you like, pay attention to this, or don't worry about that, that's not relevant for you, or they might bring someone else in to share something with you. If you find your mind going off to like shopping lists, bring it back to the event. But if your guides come and take you off to tell you something, go with them, because they've been waiting for you to get to this frequency to share something with you. And I'm told at least one person here will have that. So um, don't that that's okay, because we're gonna put this on YouTube. You can grab it again in the future or afterwards say, what, what, what did I miss? Like, don't worry. Um, always go with your guides, always. Okay, so. I'm just going to take a moment and um, ground myself. And I invite each of you to also ground yourself. Just invite your feet, we're all sitting down, your butt, your legs, to just relax and let the energy flow through them into earth. Don't worry about like what chakra is doing what. Just invite your body to relax and invite the top of your head to relax and let everything of its own initiative open up and invite divine energy to flow in through the top of your head, through your body, through your legs and feet into earth. Or if you feel inclined, up through your legs and feet, through your body, through the top of your head, to the cosmos, or both directions. What, whichever way the energy wants to flow, if it just wants to emanate out from your body, just invite everything to relax. And remember, we do not need to manage our bodies. Our bodies can manage themselves.
our divine, blessed children. We share love and greetings with you tonight. We invite you to relax and receive whatever comes your way. We are here in this beautiful wooded land, surrounded by nature, wild animals. The water runs thick and powerfully through the minerals in the soil beneath the ground. Your guides are all here with you tonight including your animal friend guides, your earth and nature spirit guides, your angels, your guardians. Open your hearts, open your minds and your souls. Allow all your guides and guardians, allow the magic of this place to fill into you. Invite the owl into your head. Invite the cougar into your belly. Invite the chipmunk to nestle in your bosom. Let the fox, the raccoons, nestle in your heart curl up on your shoulder and lick your ear. <clears throat> Invite a crow to sit on the top of your head and look around for you. Invite your chakras, your soul and heart and mind, your inspiration to all become one and let that one be one with this place, one with these people. We wish to speak with you at this time about things that are happening on your planet, in your country, in the now, in the here. Many of you have been despondent over the political actions, the inhumane brutalities that has come to your sight here in your land that calls itself of the free. You are learning the underbelly of the beautiful light that you are used to seeing, and you wonder how to reconcile this. Will it swallow you up and regurgitate you as refuse of the damned? Or will you rise above it? Do you need to disassociate from a reality to be your truly divine self? Or can you reach out your hands to help those who are calling and begging for, you, for mercy? And we tell you, tonight we wish to share with you what you can do and how you can feel inspired about what good is coming for you and this place that you call home. Not just this country, but this planet. You know, it has taken millions of years for this planet to arrive to a certain place of evolution and only 150 years of human destruction to kill nearly everything that was beautifully balanced and organically grown. This is something that each of you mourn in your heart and despair in your minds. What, what has happened and what can we do? Must we bear the weight of this destruction upon our backs? We tell you, you do not. 
You are not the ones who cause the destruction. You are the ones who are living through it, dreaming of a better day. Do you know, with the climate change that's happening, nature is rebounding. There are some beings who will not live, and there are some that will return and thrive, and there are some who will become new upon the planet. Some species who will die off, their soul collectives will either move to another place or they will return as a new species. You do not need to mourn your planet. The planet will continue. You are reaching a time where many people are stepping up and saying, now we must strike for goodness. You will see in this country and many other countries, there will be a unification for future, for salvation. It is coming, we promise you this. It is nearly here. Rather than to spare the loss of what happened, we ask you to open your hearts and send your excitement out to the future that you wish for. Mm -hmm. If you hope for a future where all the countries work together as one for a beautiful, glorious, natural, organic planet, send all of your energy to that thought and help to manifest it. We want to share with you a technique to help with this. As you know, when you are in the middle of a situation, it is difficult to see anything except the situation that immediately surrounds you. If that is unpleasant, your entire life is surrounded by unpleasantness and that can f infiltrate your being and make you think everything is unpleasant, that's all there is. We have each been there. If you step above that and formulate a plan, then you see the plan and the structure, which is nothing more than a grid, a network, a mandala, a timeline, a to-do list that allows you to get from where you do not wish to be to where you wish to be. You extend your sight beyond the dreadfulness that immediately surrounds you to that which you wish. And you are able to pull yourself to a better place. We have each done this at times in our lives, so you are familiar with this. As you are formulating your plan, connect with others formulating their plans as well so that you may dream together, you may manifest together. As you do this, we tell you, the more you shift your sight from the center of the destruction, the, the core of the distress, to further and further from it, the easier it will be for you to have efficient functional, wonderful, miraculous manifestations. How do you do this? Get out of your heads and rise up. Bring your sight up from where you are to the stratosphere, up from where you are to where your guides are watching over you. Join your guides, your guardians, join the angels as they are looking down upon the earth. Do you know what the angels see when they look at the earth? They see the energy, the flow, the movement. They see the mandalas, they see the networks and grids lit up. And they see those that are crumbling or under destruction. That's where they send their most powerful energy to support it. 
Imagine you are in the basement of a high rise that is under construction. And then imagine you are in a hot air balloon high above the building that is under construction. Your sight is much more powerful. Join your guides, join the angels and look down upon the earth. You will see that there is so much more goodness here than you realize. You will see that even as there are negative effects to horrible actions, positive growth still occurs. Nature will always reclaim. Go to the mandalas of all the races and species that are on your planet and look from their perspective. Go join the gods and look upon Earth from their perspective. And you will see the planet is very tiny and it is connected to a tremendous network of other planets and dimensions and frequencies. You will see that the light from this planet is much brighter than you think it is when you are sitting in the core of distress. And you will see how the brighter our planet shines, the better it connects with places that are extraordinary. Bring your sights higher, raise your perspective. Then when you return to where you are, you bring with you the energy of that space to the here and now and you can shine it bright for all around you those that are to your left and to your right who are in despair they will feel your light and it will help them to shine their light then they will help others to shine their light does this process make sense to you We hear no response. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Yes. Does anyone have questions? No. Not at this time. Mm. We invite you to take this moment, relax your bodies. Invite the energy to flow into you. Each of you may have energy flowing in a different direction. Each of you may have a different chakra or element of your body that feels especially lit up when you do this. Be aware of what happens to your body when you invite it to relax and flow. Think in your minds, I am surrounded by sacred space and only those of great goodness with love and concern for me and my well-being, only those of the highest frequency may connect with me. And to call out to your guides, your guardians, your mentors, the angelic council, the animals of nature and all the spirits of nature, call out and say, who will help me to claim my spot of healing this planet? Who will give me messages to help me connect on the highest level to the grids and networks? above and beyond, below and far away, to help me bring the most healing energy into my being and this planet surrounding me. Call out, then sit in stillness, welcome and receive whomever or whatever arrives.
ask them how they can be of service to you and how they can help you be of service to others. Good. We will share with you a thought, a reminder. When animals incarnate, they do not incarnate as people because they are in touch with the energy, the magic of earth and the mandalas. They are connected with their ancestors. They have a fuller, deeper connection. They see with sights that humans generally do not use anymore. When animals come to life, the contracts they have begin with, are you predator or prey? If you are prey, you will have a contract with your herd, your being tribe, and all the animals you coexist with. You also have a contract with the predator. The mountain lion will chase through a herd of deer. The deer can sprint faster than the mountain lion. But the mountain lion can outrun the deer over time. The first to fall back are the ill, the elderly, the very young. Those are the ones the mountain lion eats by contract. They help the prey remain strong by taking out those that weigh the prey down and dilute the genetic well-being of the herd. When there are more deer, the mountain lions will eat well and they will overpopulate. When there are more mountain lions, the deer will hide well and develop new senses new abilities, they will evolve. There is a beautiful balance to all of this. Humans are predators, but you have stepped out of balance. Because of this, your planet is reclaiming the balance. You find yourself becoming prey for the first time. It is frightening for your species. You must think like prey and predator at once. Those who do the best can guide their herds, your friends, families, your loved ones, through the times ahead. It is something to think about. bringing the concept of prey into your hearts and predator into your hearts at once. As you reclaim the balance in your heart, you and all the humans who wish to survive, the planet will rebalance in response.
we see the tides turning. We see goodness coming to your planet. We see tremendous changes for the better that are just ahead. Keep faith in those and go forward, encouraging those you love to go forward with you. There are many of us above and around surrounding your beautiful planet, sending all the help we can. Call to us, use us, we are here for you. We give you our love, we give you our blessings, we give you our strongest support and encouragement. And we know that you will help bring about the next stage of this planet. It will be glorious. Thank you for joining us. We send our love heart to heart and our best wishes to your dreams. Aho. Oh. Wow, I never know what they're going to say, but that was a good one. It's nice to know they're optimistic.